Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of amino acids you need to know to do well on the MCAT. Nothing is higher yield than having your amino acids down like the back of your hand. If you haven't already, you need to have memorized the structure, single letter abbreviations, as well, under, as, well as understand how the R group contributes to the overall structure of the protein. Now let's get into it. First off, let's start with our positively charged amino acids. We have arginine, histidine, and lysine. If we look at the R group, which is on the bottom of these images, a pattern begins to emerge. All of these positively charged amino acids have a bunch of protonated nitrogen groups. This is what you will want to think of when you are memorizing the positively charged amino acids. Look for that positively charged nitrogen. We also want to think about what does it mean to be positively charged. In this case, it means that these amino acids are what we call basic amino acids. They're going to act as a base and are likely to interact with other charged molecules, likely the acidic molecules. Note that these charged amino acids can also hydrogen bond because we have hydrogens bound to these nitrogens. Now let's take a look at the negatively charged amino acids. There are only two amino acids that fit into this designation. We have aspartic and glutamic acid. As the name suggests, these amino acids are also, well, acidic. The common pattern to look for in their R groups is that they are all negatively charged carboxylic acids. These amino acids are also likely to interact with other charged molecules, again, probably the basic molecules. And in terms of hydrogen bonding, note that these don't have a hydrogen to give, but they could be hydrogen bond acceptors. Now, the positive and negatively charged amino acids we just talked about are all polar amino acids because they are charged. However, being polar doesn't automatically mean you need to be charged. Take, for example, the alcohol group. An alcohol group is going to have a dipole due to the oxygen, but it is not itself negatively charged. Thus, amino acids with an alcohol in their R group are going to be polar, even though they're not acidic or basic. These amino acids include serine, threonine, and tyrosine. Now, there is some debate about tyrosine, depending on your undergrad instructor, but for the AAMC, it is classified as a polar amino acid. Other amino acids that are polar include cysteine, which has an SH group. I like to remember this one by SH is similar to an OH, just a row lower on the periodic table. Finally, we have asparagine and glutamine. These are just like the negatively charged amino acid counterparts, aspartic acid and glutamic acid, except instead of having a carboxylic acid, you'll see that we have an amide, that NH2. Finally, we have the nonpolar amino acids. I like to remember these a few different ways. The first is just saying, well, these are the everything else amino acids. They aren't polar or charged in any way. They are usually full of a bunch of carbons and look pretty unreactive from an organic chemistry standpoint. Let's break the hydrophobic amino acids into the following groups, branched carbons, aromatics, and blocked free activities. For our branched carbons, we have glycine up top here, alanine, valine, isoleucine, leucine. For our aromatics, we have phenylalanine and tryptophan. Though please note that tyrosine is an aromatic, it is not a hydrophobic aromatic for the MCAT, so we're not going to show it on this diagram, but tyrosine is an aromatic amino acid. And then finally, we have the amino acids with what I call blocked reactivities. These are methionine and proline. If you take a look at methionine here, you'll see it looks very similar to cysteine, which we saw earlier right here in yellow, except that the S, the sulfur, is incapable of forming disulfide bonds because it's being blocked by this methyl group, thus the meth in methionine. And if we look at proline in the top right here in yellow, we see that proline has a nitrogen that is stuck in a ring. Thus, it's not going to be very reactive due to steric hindrance for one. Before continuing on to the next video, make sure that you have memorized all of these critical characteristics. There are tons of amino acids on the MCAT. I cannot stress enough how important this is. You will need a very, very strong foundation. In our next video, we're going to look at how the MCAT wants you to apply all the information you just learned. So throw this into your flashcards, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching our video on the different amino acids, and I'll see you next time.